In this video, I'm going to show you the marker track. A marker track is something that can hold markers and therefore locate specific places along your timeline of the Cubase project. So let's add a marker track to our project, and I'm just going to close up the signature track, but leave it visible. And then I'm going to put the marker track beneath the tempo track. So I'm going to highlight the tempo track and then right click and select add marker track. Once you've added the marker track, let's take a look at the track controls because there are some new ones that you haven't seen before. The first one is add a single marker. The other one is add a cycle marker. A cycle, just like in cycle recording, is a period of time that repeats over and over again. And we're not going to learn about cycle markers in this video. So let's deal specifically with adding individual markers. So you can add markers any one of a number of ways. One way is to locate to a specific point in time of your project and then simply click the add marker button. You can see that that just added a marker to the marker track, and since I haven't added any additional markers, it gave it the number 1. So now if we located to another measure, like measure 4, and clicked the Add Marker button again, it would add the second marker to the marker track. And then let's add another one at measure 6. So now we have three different markers in our project by clicking the Add Marker button on the marker track. So let me show you a couple of other ways to add markers. One way is to hold down the Option button, and while you're holding the Option button, you'll notice that the pointer turns into a pencil. So now you can hold the Option button and click where you want to place the marker. So if I wanted to place another one at measure 9, there's marker 5 and marker 6, and you'll notice that that method doesn't require you to move the cursor first. So now, how do you move the position to those locators? One way is to just double click on the marker, and you'll notice that when you do that, the cursor moves right to the marker's position on the time ruler. So if I wanted to quickly locate to the fourth marker, I can do that just by double clicking on any of those markers. Now there's another way to move the cursor to a marker location, and that's done down here on the transport panel. You can see that you have these 15 little buttons. These 15 buttons are the numbered markers as they appear in the marker track. So if I wanted to locate the cursor to marker number 1, I can come down to the transport panel and click on the number 1 button, and you'll see that the cursor snaps right to the position of the first marker. If I wanted to get to the fifth marker, I can just click the number five button. So using this little control panel down here allows you to have access to 15 different markers. So if your Cubase project is going to have a lot of markers, you might want to consider reserving the first 15 for really important parts of the project, because you can get to them very quickly by ticking on the numbered marker in the marker display. And with that in mind, let's say that we wanted to use one of these reserved markers inside of our marker window, but not in sequential order. For example, if we wanted to put marker number 15 at measure 11, we can move the cursor there and then hold down the Option button on your keyboard and then click on marker 15. That will change the order of the markers and insert the desired marker at the position of the cursor. Now let me show you another way to navigate through the markers. If you look at your Mac keyboard, the B, B is in beta, and the N, or N is in November, those two keys are right next to one another. So Steinberg decided to make the B button the previous marker advance. So if you type B, like in before, Every time you click the B button, it's going to navigate sequentially through all of your markers. And then the N key on your keyboard, if you tap that key, that's going to go to the next marker. So previous markers, next marker. Or you can locate to a specific marker down here on the transport panel, for example, like clicking on 15. Or you can double click on any marker in the marker track to move the playback position.
Now the marker track is very similar to both the tempo and the signature tracks in that if you remove the track, it doesn't necessarily erase the events that are on the track because the markers are held in a very specific location in Cubase and that's in the marker window. And you can get to the marker window by typing command M for markers on your Mac keyboard or you can also go under the project pull down menu and select markers. Now you can see that all the markers that I had previously added appear in the marker list, even though I erased the marker track from the track column. So if I were to re-add that marker track, we're going to see all of that data still exists in the marker track. But the marker window allows us to do a couple of other really good things, including naming the markers. So I'm going to move the marker window down here a little bit, and now we can give each marker its own own description and that will appear in the project window of your project. So let's call this first one uh, Song Start. When I give that a name, you'll see that the marker itself is named in the project window. If we were to name another one, like Verse, then we're able to visualize the position of those markers and the marker description from within the project window. And then there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is that currently Cubase does not have an insert marker key command. So let me show you how to make your own. Go ahead and close the marker window and then locate your cursor to any part of the song, and then go under the file pull down menu and select key commands. And then type in the search field insert marker. When you do that, you'll find the insert marker command, and it currently does not have a key command assigned to it. And the key that I usually assign is the forward slash key. On an American keyboard, that forward slash key is located above the enter or return button on your QWERTY Mac keyboard. Not the enter button of the numeric keypad, that, as we learned before, is the play button. So this is the forward slash key above the enter of the QWERTY keyboard. So if you come over here and click on type in key and type that forward slash and then assign, now you'll see that forward slash key is going to insert a new marker every single time we click on it. So when we are playing the project and we type that forward slash key, it's going to add a sequentially numbered marker. But, but, but and they don't necessarily have to be in time or snap to any particular measure, bar, or beat. Boom, 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 boom. So I like to use that forward slash key to drop markers into a project. Now, you'll notice that I was using some musical references to name the markers before, and this is not the best place to do it. The best place to keep track of the components or sections of your project is in the arranger track, and we'll talk about that in the next video.